Hello again everyone and welcome to this lesson on completing the square. Now we'll start this lesson with the question, what does a quadratic equation look like? Now we're used to seeing quadratics with an ax squared term plus a bx term plus a c term all equal to zero. Now we can tweak this equation and move things around the equal sign, for instance subtracting c to the other side resulting in ax squared plus bx equals negative c is still a form of a quadratic equation, just in a rearranged order. So let's say that we have the example x squared plus 5x plus 6. There's really a 1 in front of that x squared term, but we don't need to put it there. And what we want to do is, is we want to factor this. So under normal circumstances, we find two numbers that add to positive 5 and multiply to 6. In that case, it would be x plus 3, x plus 2, set it equal to 0. And then we would solve it and find out that the two factors of this quadratic are x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. But now we're working on that next level and the quadratics that we are working with are not so easily factorable. So before we get into some more advanced examples, let's take a look at another simple quadratic equation, x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0. Now this one is easily factored to x plus 4 times x plus 4 since 4 plus 4 equals 8, and 4 times 4 equals 16. Now we can rewrite x plus 4 times itself as x plus 4 squared. This is now is equal to 0. And a different way of solving this one than we did in the last one is, to get rid of that exponent, we take the square root of both sides. That's going to cancel out that square on the left side. Now on the right side, we know that the square root of 0 is just 0, so we can rewrite this as plus or minus 0. Okay, that plus or minus is very important when evaluating these square roots in these kind of questions. And finally, I'm just going to subtract 4 from both sides. The positive 4 and negative 4 on the left side cancel out, getting x by itself. Now on the right side, I'm going to rearrange that plus or minus 0 minus 4. And now I can just evaluate. Obviously, negative 4 plus 0 just equals negative 4. And negative 4 minus 0 also equals negative 4. So we have one solution to this quadratic, x equals negative 4. Now keeping this approach in mind, let's go ahead and learn how to complete the square. So let's go ahead and jump into an example where we have to complete the square in order to solve a quadratic equation. So for this example, we have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 25. Now our first step here is to rearrange the quadratic if necessary. And this one we have to rearrange. The constant term, the plus 9, we want to move to the right side of the equal sign. We want all the constants on one side. So I subtract 9 from the left side, cancel it out, subtract 9 from the right side, 25 minus 9 equals 16. And now my quadratic is arranged the way I want it to be, x squared minus 6x equals 16. Also note that I'm going to leave these open spaces in the equation. I'm going to use them later on when solving this. Okay, so step 2 now for completing the square is to add b over 2 squared to each side of the equation. Now what that means is we take the b term, we divide it by 2, and then square that value and add it to both sides. In this case, b is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is just negative 3. And then negative 3 squared equals positive 9. So we're going to add 9 to both sides of this equation. And now our third and final step for completing the square is to factor and solve for x. Now we'll start with the trinomial on the left side of the equal sign, x squared minus 6x plus 9, which factors out to x minus 3 times itself x minus 3. Now the whole point of completing the square is just like in the last example, to factor out a trinomial in this way where the factors are the same number, because then we can solve the quadratic using square roots. Now over on the right side of the equal sign, 16 plus 9 just equals 25. And back on the left side, I can rewrite x minus 3 times x minus 3 as x minus 3 squared. Now to get rid of that 2 in the exponent, I take the square root of both sides. On the left side, they cancel each other out. On the right side, the square root of 25 will evaluate to plus or minus 5. Now our goal here is still to get x all by itself, so we have to get rid of that minus 3 on the left side. We're just going to add 3 to both sides. Left side, the 3's get canceled out, and now x is all alone. Now we have to go ahead and evaluate the right side, and we'll be finished. So, first we'll start with 3 plus 5. 
which just evaluates the positive 8. That's our first solution for x. And our second solution, 3 minus 5, equals negative 2. And we have our two answers. Now what's really cool about completing the square is that this method will apply to solving any quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and use it in some more advanced examples. So for our first example, we want to solve for x by completing the square. And we have the quadratic x squared plus 2x minus 7 equals 0. Now remember, the first step is to rearrange the quadratic so that all the constants are on the right side of the equal sign. So I have to move that negative 7, just add it to the other side, that'll cancel it out. And now I have x squared plus 2x equals positive 7. Leaving ourselves some room to work with, we move on to the second step for completing the square, taking b over 2 squared and adding it to both sides of the equal sign. So again, I take the b term, I divide it by 2, and I square it. In this case, the b term is 2. 2 divided by 2 is equal to just positive 1, and we know that positive 1 squared equals 1, so we're going to be adding 1 to both sides of the equal sign. And now we're ready for the final step to factor and solve for x. So just like in the last example, we're going to start on the left side of the equal sign and factor that trinomial x squared plus 2x plus 1, which is x plus 1 times x plus 1 when factored out, and 7 plus 1 on the right side equals 8. Now back to the left side, x plus 1 times x plus 1. Again, we're going to rewrite this as the sum of x plus 1 squared. And now we can take the square root of both sides. Taking the square root on the left side will cancel out the exponent. The square root symbol and the exponent of the 2 cancel each other out. Now 8 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to leave it in the square root. I'm not going to evaluate it. I'm just going to express it as plus or minus whatever the square root of 8 is. And then I can go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. So now I have x all by itself, and I'm ready to evaluate to find the two solutions to this quadratic. So I have x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 8. Now I can evaluate the square root of 8 to approximately 2.83, and then find my two solutions for x. Negative 1 plus 2.83 is 1.83, and our second solution, negative 1 minus 2.83, equals negative 3.83, and we have successfully completed the square for this example. Okay, so now we have one more example here where we are going to solve a quadratic 4x by completing the square. So in this case, we have x squared minus 4x plus 6 equals 0. We have to rearrange it by subtracting that 6. Okay, again, we want all the constants on the right side of the equal sign. So now we should have x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 6. Now we're ready for step 2, which is adding b over 2 squared to both sides of the equal sign. In this case, the b term is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is positive 4. So we're going to be adding 4 to both sides of the equal sign. And now we're ready for the final step, which is to factor and solve for x. So start on the left side of the equal sign, the trinomial x squared minus 4x plus 4 factors to x minus 2 times x minus 2. On the right side, negative 6 plus 4 is equal to negative 2. Back on the left side, we rewrite x minus 2 times itself as x minus 2 squared, and then take the square root of both sides. Now again, on the left side, the square root and the 2 exponent cancel each other out. Now over on the right side, in that square root, we have a negative 2, a negative number here. So this example involves imaginary numbers. I'm going to pull out the i and rewrite this as plus or minus i times the square root of 2. Leave 2 in the square root because it's not a perfect square. And now I can add 2 to both sides to get x by itself. And I have x equals 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 2. And we're going to go ahead and leave our solution in this a plus bi form. And that is how you complete the square. So remember the steps. First you rearrange it so that all the constants are on the right side of the equal sign. Then you add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equal sign. Then you factor and solve. And that's all there is to it.